Hello and good evening, House on Rock London. My name is Shegalanian, and you are watching our live class on a Wednesday. Now, the Faith School series has been truly illuminating this last couple of weeks, and tonight promises to be even better. We are going to be learning all about how faith works in the third installment of the series today. So don't keep this opportunity to yourself. Take a quick moment right now to share the online link on your social media platforms and also with your families and friends, as we definitely don't want them to miss out on this fantastic teaching. But before we go into the teaching tonight, let's have a moment of worship with Sis Linda and Grace L. Your name, your name is true. 
evening once again, brethren. Welcome to another live class on a Wednesday. And you are in for a great time tonight. Didn't we have a phenomenal time last week, Wednesday? And then on Sunday too, God is moving us from level to level and from glory to glory. Before we get into tonight's class, let me quickly invite you into this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday is going to be um, Father's Day. It's going to be Father's Day. It's going to be a great service. I want you to tune in and I want you to invite every man in your life, your friends, your colleagues and your biological and spiritual fathers into the service. It's going to be a powerful one. It's going to be a blessed one. It's going to be a liberating one and you really don't want to miss it. So let's get everybody in. If you can't come in person, join us online, but you are strongly encouraged to come in person to the Rock Tower, 49 Toffinell Park Road, N70 PS. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. We've been in a great journey this month so far, talking about faith in the faith school. And I'm particularly excited about tonight's teaching because it's going to be line up online, precept upon precept. I'm really going to dive in deep to teach from God's word. So this is a good time like any other to invite everybody you know to come join us in this live class. So send out a text message right now, a WhatsApp message if you're on Facebook. Share the feed so as many people as possible can join us in tonight's teaching. It's going to be liberated. So let's go right in there. Our pilot text is taken from the book of Romans on chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 14 to verse 17 of Romans and chapter 10. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is a powerful portion of scripture. I've taught from it several times before because we see how things are meant to come, are meant to operate, and how men are meant to be able to receive salvation. He says that how will they call upon him uh, on whom they have believed? But they can't even believe if they've never heard about him. And they would not hear about him if there isn't somebody preaching. And there won't be somebody preaching unless somebody has been sent, hallelujah, to preach. So we see a process here. I want to announce to you tonight that you are listening to a sent one. I've been sent to preach and to teach faith. Now, as I preach and you hear, the scripture makes it clear, then you are able to believe. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the work word of God. This is powerful. And this is so important to, to understand because Satan realizes that when you bring the preacher and the hearer together, great things happen. When you bring the preacher and the hearer together, great things happen. Faith is produced and the impossible becomes possible. So Satan is working over time to create degrees of separation between the preacher and the hearer. He's trying to separate the preacher from the hearer because he knows that as long as they stay, stay separate, faith will not be produced and the impossible will not become possible. So now we've got to be determined that we are going to constantly be bringing the preacher and the hearer together because when they come together, good things happening. And that's why I'm teaching tonight. The preacher is meeting with you, the hearer, and something good, something awesome, something wonderful 
is about to happen in your life. And that's why you too should be an ambassador, making sure you are inviting and pulling and convincing men to come under the hearing of God's word, knowing that if they hear it, they will be delivered. You know, the scripture says as well that the gospel is, is so beautiful. The problem is that the God of this world has blinded the minds of men so that they don't hear, let alone receive the gospel. But we are thwarting the enemy in all of his strategies and making sure the men and women hear the word of God. Faith works if you work it. Faith works if you work it. If faith is not working, it's because you are not working it. But how does faith work? And that's where my attention is tonight. I want to teach you how faith, faith works. I want to go into the mechanics of exactly how faith works. Let's pray. Mighty Father, I ask that you send the anointing that makes preaching, teaching, and sharing your truth easy, that you cause my tongue to be as the pen of the ready writer, that I might inscribe upon the hearts of the men and women listening your living truth, and that by reason of that truth, they'll be elevated to a new level of experience with you. Cause faith to come, even as I preach and I teach the word tonight. Cause there to be liberation, illumination, emancipation, and great liftings. Great deliverance take place in this to all in the lives of all the hearers, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, over the last few weeks, we've come to see and embrace fully how important faith is. How important faith is. In the book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If is a conditional clause. It says if. So the pressure of possibility is on your believing. The pressure for the possibility of that thing coming to pass is on your believing. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. This is powerful indeed. Because in the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. But we just read that... Uh, to him that believes, all things shall be possible. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 26, it says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So it is only with God that all things are possible. It's only with God that nothing shall be impossible. But we read earlier, didn't we, in Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, that if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What does this mean? It means that if you are able to believe, you are elevated out of the man class to the God class with whom nothing is impossible, with whom all things are are possible. Wow. That's how powerful faith is. That's how strong faith is. It elevates you to a level where the impossible becomes possible. Hallelujah. If you can believe it, you can have it. If you can believe. This is so powerful. I've, I've come to understand this phrase so strongly that the condition for my, my receiving things now is, can I believe it? So whenever I'm believing God for something or whenever I want something, whenever I'm expi aspiring for something, I'm asking myself, can I believe this? If you can believe it, then you can have it. So sometimes, listen to me, I'm already giving you a hack here, a spiritual and a wisdom hack here. The question is, what is stopping me from believing that this is possible? Now, if I can address what is stopping me from me believing that this is possible, then I simply deal with that thing and then I can believe it. And if I can believe it, I can have it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I look at what conditions have to be true for me to believe that I can get the permission promotion. What conditions have to be true for me to believe that I can get the luxurious car? What conditions have to be true for me to believe that I can break through into the next level? What conditions have to be true for me to be able to believe that I can have my own children? So then if I know what conditions need to be true, I now work to make those conditions true so that I can believe because I know that the day I can believe it, I've got it. 
Because the day I don't believe it, I can't have it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So I'm always looking at what needs to be true. What do I need to put in place? And sometimes all I need to put in place is the word of God. All I need to put in place is to be full of God's words and God's promises as regards that thing to the point where there's nothing else that fills my mental space. Then I can believe it. Hallelujah. If you can believe it, you can have it. If you believe you can have it, you can have it. If you believe you cannot have it, you cannot have it. Whatever you believe, is what's going to happen. Hallelujah. So now listen to Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, I'm laying a foundation before I go into the mechanics of how faith works. In Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6, it says, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. He says, increase our faith. And the Lord answered them and said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed. So now, the disciples were asking Jesus for an increase in their faith. They wanted more faith. But Jesus responded and said that, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can do the impossible. Do you understand the meaning of that? Jesus was telling them that what you, the issue is not the increase in your faith. The issue is not that you need more faith. You need an, a, a sizable increase in your faith. Because faith as small as a mustard seed can still achieve the impossible. So the problem is not the size of your faith. The problem maybe is the strength of your faith. Now, let me take a side step and quickly speak to you right now and let you know. You have faith. Every single human being has faith. For unto all of us has been dealt um, the measure or a measure of faith. The question is, what are you doing with the faith that you have? All of us, uh, all conditions being equal, have biceps muscles, have triceps muscles, have various muscles in our bodies. The question is, what are you doing with the muscle that has been given to you? Are you working them out? Are you developing their strength to carry things? Or are you leaving them unused and therefore they're becoming flabby and ultimately getting wasted? Do you hear me what I'm saying? All of us have faith. You have faith. Regardless of whatever disappointments you've gone through, whatever downturns you've gone, gone through, you still have faith. God has placed faith within you. You have faith. Your issue is not the whether you have faith or you don't have faith. You actually do have faith. And it's not even about how big your faith is. It's about the strength of your faith. But I'm going to deep, go deeper now and help you to see. Jesus says the problem is not the size of your faith because a mustard seed of faith, which is one of the smallest seeds in the world, can achieve the impossible. So the problem is not the size of your faith. So what is the problem? The problem is the strength of your faith. But what determines the strength of your faith? I'll tell you what determines the strength of your faith. When you go to the book of Mark and chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, shall not doubt. Okay, so this is the key. The key is the presence or the absence of doubt. A mustard seed of faith without doubt can achieve the impossible. A mountain load of faith with doubt can do nothing. The problem isn't the size of your faith. The problem is the presence or the absence of doubt. So the issue is not so much about increasing your faith as much as it is about eliminating doubt, okay? In the book of first in the book of James, James, James chapter 1 verse 5 to 7, it says, "If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And let not that man who is wavering 
who is allowing his faith to waver, who is entertaining doubt and double-mindedness, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The real issue here is dealing with doubt and unbelief. If you can get rid of doubt and unbelief, then your faith can achieve the impossible. Now, let me quickly make a clear def def distinction between doubt and unbelief. They're, they are connected, but they are not the same thing. Well, often we use the words interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. Doubt is, shall this be? How shall this be? I, I, I'm not sure. Doubt is a temptation. It, it can fly through your mind, but it could also sit there. Unbelief, listen, unbelief is how shall I know? I don't believe this thing can come to pass. Unbelief is a choice. Doubt is a temptation, is a suggestion. Are you starting to see the difference here? You see, Mary doubted while Zacharias had unbelief. You see, when the angel appeared to Mary, Mary said, how shall these things be? That was doubt. But there was still an underline of, of faith there that let it be to me according to your word. She wasn't saying that it couldn't be happen, it couldn't happen. She was saying, How shall it be? Okay. While Zacharias was saying, How shall I know? So he was fully in unbelief. I don't believe this. So I need some proof. I need you to tell me, give me something that will be substantiated. Doubt is I'm struggling believe to believe. While unbelief is a choice not to believe. You've got to move totally away from unbelief because unbelief is a choice. Doubt is often a fleeting thought of negativity and impossibility. But the scripture says, take no thought. So you, when that suggestion is flying through, you don't take it. You let it go. Hallelujah. I choose not to take the suggestion of doubt. Choose not to take the suggestion of doubt. It might come, but it doesn't have to stay. Uh, and when you, when you take the thought of doubt and stay on it, then that doubt will become unbelief. Doubt grows into unbelief if you let it. Hallelujah. I, I want to quickly ask you a few questions. What have you marked as impossible, such as you don't even bother to think about venturing them there, let alone asking for it? What have you believed is impossible? It simply cannot happen in your thinking. That's no longer doubt. That has now become unbelief. Interestingly, to deal with doubt and unbelief, we have to understand how faith works because doubt is actually, an unbelief is faith in reverse is actually the reverse of faith. It's believing in something contrary to the word of God. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? So let's now start to delve into the mechanics of exactly how faith works, how faith works. A pilot text starts to open it up to us in verse 17 of Romans in chapter 10, where it says, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. This is, we're breaking it down now. This is how faith comes. It comes by hearing. But it's not just any hearing. It's hearing the word of God. It comes by hearing the word of God. So now you have to cre create uh, what you listen to, what you give your ears to. Because what you give your ears to is what's going to produce on the inside of you. When the scripture says that guard your heart with all diligence, one of the entry places to your heart are your ears, okay? So you've got to now guard your ears and be very deliberate, create the sources that you listen to because what you are listening to is producing either good or the bad on the inside of you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now listen to what it said. It did not say faith comes by having heard the word of God. It says that faith comes by hearing, which is a present continuous phrase. It means a constant repetitive hearing, continuing to 
hear the word of God. This is what produces and keeps faith alive on the inside of you. You've got to keep on listening to. You've got to keep on positioning yourself, getting yourself in a place where you are able to hear the word of God. That's why Wednesday in, Wednesday out, you are constantly making sure you are tuning in for a midweek life class on a Wednesday to hear the word of God. That's why you are making sure that you are in service Sunday in, Sunday out because you are there to hear the word. It's not every service that you're going to hear totally new and fresh things because we need to keep on hearing even the supposedly old things, but they are the ones that are keeping our faith alive and feeding us and feeding us and feeding us. A continual hearing of God's word is not just uh, just any hearing, but the hearing of God's word. Uh, it is the word of God that you hear that produces faith within you. Hallelujah. This is the power of even testimonies. Uh, uh, you, 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 when you learn how to give a testimony, this is the way to give a testimony. It must be still laced uh, with the word of God. You must, the word of God must be in there also, such that people can have that ingredient that produces faith in them. The, just hearing a testimony that don't have the word of God in it can encourage people, but it can't really produce faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. So where is the word of God in the production of that testimony in your life? Another person's testimony encourages your faith, but the premise of your faith must remain the word of God that you have heard and believed for yourself. So faith, this is, we're talking about how faith works. Faith works and comes into uh, into operation first and foremost by the continual hearing of God's word. So faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's interesting that this is how fear comes also. Fear comes by hearing the word of the enemy. Fear comes by hearing a negative report. Fear comes by hearing all, all sorts of negative stuff. And this is why you have to even be careful about hearing the news. You can't be constantly listening to the news because bad news sells better. So the news more often than not is just loaded with all sorts of bad predictions, bad reports. You need to take the news in small doses. You just want the highlights, what's happening in the world, and then you stop. You don't want to feed yourself that. You know, I know some brethren, even in this season, you've been listening to so much news about the cost of living crisis, about how everything is going down and how everything is getting so expensive and you don't know that it's curating fear within you and it's causing you to step out of faith. Well, that devil is a liar. As much as I'm aware of what's happening in the world, I'm not in denial. I'm in faith. I choose to hear God's word superior to what the world is saying. The word is superior to the world. The word is superior to the world. The word is is superior to the word, so uh, to the world. So I'm const constantly listening to God's word to fill me with faith above the world, for this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. All right. So faith comes by hearing the word of God. Now, if faith comes by hearing the word of God, how does faith go to work? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. How does faith go to work? In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, And since then we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So faith speaks. Hallelujah. Faith goes to work by the speaking of it. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Nothing happened until God spoke. Hallelujah. Faith goes to work by the speaking of it. The primary way that faith goes to work is by speaking faith. Faith talk. Faith sets things in motion when it is spoken. Hallelujah. In the King James translation, the word translated confession, that word that is translated confession can also be translated. The same Hebrew word, the same Greek word is translated profession. 
It can be translated either confession or profession. And that's why in some translations, you'll see it being called confession. In another translation, you'll be seeing, seeing it be called profession because it's the same word that can both mean confession or profession. I dare say that it means both. Our confession of faith is our profession of faith. Our profession of faith is our confession of faith. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, in the book of uh, First Timothy, I'm going to read a bunch of them now. In the book of First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Don't miss next week Wednesday. It's going to be all about the, the fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal love, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. That word profession there is also confession. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 11. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly call, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, confession, Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, our confession. Same thing. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession or profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised the greek word that i just told you about translated pro profession or confession is homologia homologia which means acknowledgement assent covenant agreement acknowledgement give thanks a promise this means to say the same thing your words must say the same thing that your heart is believing we say we speak of the same thing that we believe in our hearts there must be a divine alignment between your heart and your mouth our confession is our profession our profession is our confession now let me break it down our profession is what we do for a living right your profession is what you do for a living as a fisherman fishes a farmer farms a doctor doctors who practices medicine so also a believer's profession a believer's profession a believer's profession is his confession your confession what you are saying is your actual profession it's what you do for a living you speak for a living Ooh, you speak things into being faith goes to work by the speaking of it and last week wednesday uh we, as we were we we're dealing with the definition of faith we made it clear also what faith does speak and what faith does not speak Faith, according to Romans 4 and 17, calls those things that be not as though they were. It calls those things that be not as though they were. Faith does not call those things that be as though they were not. This is a significant difference because faith does not deny its current earthly reality, but chooses to embrace an alternative spiritual and superior reality and superimposes that reality on the earthly temporal reality. Hallelujah. You get it. You remember what I taught you last week, Wednesday. Hallelujah. Faith does not say the mountain does not exist uh, or is not there. No, it acknowledges that the mountain there but is there but faith simply tells the mountain to move hallelujah do you get it Ooh, hallelujah real faith is not denial i'm not in denial about my reality but i choose to embrace a, a superior and alternative heavenly reality and as i hold fast to my profession confession of faith um, uh, about my situation it my, my situation is about to change and agree with my heavenly reality hallelujah amen amen ah uh, hallelujah so faith comes by hearing Faith goes to work by the speaking of it. But faith also sees things differently, like we've quoted before in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith works, also works by seeing things differently. Because seeing is everything. The way you see things determines the direction of your life. So faith comes by hearing it goes to work by speaking, but faith also works by how you see things. 
You cannot see things exactly the way everyone else sees, sees things and expect a different outcome. You've got to see things differently from the way people see, see things. Ten spies entered the promised land and they saw things in it from a particular perspective. They saw themselves defeated and they were defeated. While Joshua and Caleb saw the same thing, but they saw it differently. They saw it as uh, 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 something that they could be victorious in. So faith sees things differently. The armies of Israel saw Goliath in a particular way. While when David came on the scene, he looked at the same thing but saw it differently because faith sees things differently. Faith sees possibility where others see impossibility. Where unbelief sees no way, faith always sees there's a way. Faith sees an, uh, sees an obstacle as an opportunity for God to show up and to show up. I decree and declare that even as you start to look at your situation with the eyes of faith, God is going to show up and he's going to show off in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when the scriptures say we walk by faith and not by sight, it's not saying that we do not walk uh, we do not walk by the intimidation of the immediate obstacle, but we see through the obstacle to an inevitable our uh, inevitable victory. For the joy set before us, we endured the cross like our firstborn brother Jesus did. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me summarize again how far we've gone. Faith comes by hearing. Faith goes to work by the speaking of it. Faith sees things differently. Amen. Now, faith goes to work. Faith works. What does this mean? In the book of James, chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, and then verse 26. Let me quickly read it to you. Yea, O man, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, upon the altar? You see, God required for Abraham, because people have asked this question severally, that why would God say Abraham should take Isaac to offer? Because faith must be justified and confirmed by works, by corresponding action. So God needed Abraham to take an action that proved, that showcased his faith. Hallelujah. Then verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. But verse 26, this is the clincher. This is the, this is the one that brings it home. For as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead. Woo, hallelujah. So how does faith work? Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It goes, by, it goes to work by the speaking of it. It sees things differently, but faith takes action. Faith engages in corresponding action, corresponding to work, what? Corresponding to the word of God that it has believed. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Faith is coming in your space right now, even as you are listening right now. Faith is coming into that space right now, right now, right now. Listen. You must understand the difference between faith and belief. Belief is the beginning of faith, but it's not the totality of faith because faith is not a now. Faith is a verb. A now is the name of a person, a place, or a thing. While a verb is an action word. Faith is a verb. It's an action word. Faith takes action. So what you believe might be right but if you never take action, you might never see what you believe come to pass. So all you had was belief. You did not have faith. Faith is taking action on what you believe. Faith is taking action on what you believe. Belief is what you believe, while faith is the action you take 
because of what you believe. Hallelujah. So I'm thirsty. I, I don't have the time tonight to go through that illustration. I'm thirsty to the point of death. And then I come into a room and they give me a cup of water. And I start to say, I believe if I drink this cup of water, I will not die. And everybody is excited that I believe the right things. And I repeat it one time, two times, three times. I get into a little bit of a preacher. If I drink this water, I will not die. And then the sixth time, I'm making my preach get hot. And I start to choke and I fall down and I die. And I get to heaven. I'm at the gate of heaven. I'm speaking to, to, to Peter and Paul and maybe Archangel Gabriel. And they're saying, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. And I, I'm, I'm arguing with them. I said, hey, but, but I believe the right thing. I, I, I believe that if I drank that water, I would not have died. And they said, so why didn't you drink it? And I go like, oh, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Because faith is not just believing, it's taking action upon what you believe. It's taking the corresponding action. I needed to drink the water. Faith is drinking the water, not just believing that the water would keep me alive. The proof of the presence of faith is the action that I take. Remember the two, four friends that tore up the roof and let their friends down and Jesus, the, the scripture says that Jesus saw their faith. What did he see? He saw the action that they took. The proof that I am expecting you is what I am doing in preparation to receive you. My actions betray my faith or my lack thereof. Hallelujah. The works here are not the works of the law or the works of the flesh. They are the works of faith in the grace of God. Hallelujah. The works are corresponding action to what you say you believe. So every time you say you believe, the next thing you're supposed to be exercising yourself in is find out what corresponding action should I be taking to, to agree with, to confirm what I say I believe. I need to behave like I believe. Hallelujah. Faith works if you work it. You've got to find the corresponding action to take to validate your faith. Are you getting me what I'm saying? The corresponding action for each of us can be different. Let's get that right. You must find out what your own corresponding action is. Don't put God in a box. God can give different instructions to different people on what their own corresponding action should be. For some people, their corresponding action might be go and rest and when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be good. Another person's corresponding action, go, go and start walking down the road right now and you're going to get your miracle. Another person's corresponding action is start the business. Another person's corresponding action is go and talk to so, so and so. Another person's corresponding action is do this, do that. You got to find out what your corresponding action is, but you know that faith is a verb. It's an action word. Hallelujah. It is God that will decide whether the result is going to come through clearly supernatural means or whether it's going to come through seemingly natural means. <laughs> Let him be God. I say seemingly natural because even the natural means that we often ascribe it to be natural means, if God wasn't behind it, it wouldn't have come to you naturally. Hallelujah. This is how faith works. This is how faith works. So let's try to summarize it and bring it all together right now. Faith comes by the continual hearing of the word of God. Faith goes to work by speaking, by the speaking of it, calling those things that be as though they were, not calling those things that the, the, um, the, calling those things that be not as though they were, not calling those things that be as though they were not. Hallelujah. Did you get it? Faith sees things differently, looking beyond the immediate problem to the inevitable solution in God, seeing possibility in the midst of possibility, seeing a way where there seems to be no way. Faith works by corresponding action. Did you get it? Do you get it? Hallelujah. Those are four steps, right? 
Faith comes by hearing the word of God, continual hearing of God's word. Faith goes to work by speaking the word of God, calling those things that be not as though they were, not calling those things that be as though they were not. Faith sees things differently, so it's looking at possibility, seeing opportunity and obstacle, seeing a way where nobody, where everybody else is seeing no way. And then faith works by taking corresponding action. This is how faith works, okay? Let's practicalize it and bring it home to you, working your faith. So I'm giving you four key points of assignment right now. You're going to write it down and you're going to go and work on it. Define the objective of your faith. Define what you need. Define the objective of your faith, which is your hope. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So what is your hope? What are you hoping for? Define, clearly define what the objective of your faith is. Number one. Number two, define the premise for your faith. Divi define the premise for for your faith. What's the premise for faith? It's always the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what that means is that go and find scriptures and verses that promise you those things that you that you're hoping for, that you want your faith to substantiate, okay? Define the premise. What where is it in the word of God that that thing is promised to you? The revelation of God's word that is your local standi, your premise, uh, your legal tender, if you like, the word of God. That's number two. Number three, define the vision of your faith. That is, envision the desired outcome. So I'm looking beyond the problem to the solution, beyond the obstacle to the opportunity, beyond the resistance to the breakthrough. Hallelujah. The vision of your faith, define the vision of your faith, okay? And then number four, define the action of your faith. What work am I meant to do to get there? Define the actions you are meant to take to get there. The corresponding action, hallelujah. I, I hope you wrote those things down. That is specific assignment. And you start to work them and you start to work them and you start to work them. And now you are working by faith, hallelujah. Now you are practicalizing faith and you are seeing results. Let me put it another way as I close. Define what you want. Define what God's word says about it. Define your ultimate vision and define what you must do to get there. And you will get there. This is how faith works. So we are taking faith totally out of the realm of the mystical, the ethereal or, or the uh, subliminal. And we're bringing it into the realm of real application, practical application. This is how the just lives by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to live by faith? Somebody said faith doesn't work. That's not true. Faith will work if you work it. You haven't been working it or you haven't been working it the right way. I decree and declare that great testimonies of the results and the rewards of faith are, co are coming in our lives like never before in the name of Jesus. We're going to see an abundant overflow of result after result after result, breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough in the name of Jesus. It's still a season of suddenlies, sudden turnaround, sudden lifting, sudden promotion, sudden supply, sudden help, all rushing in your direction, even as you live and walk by faith. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we do give praise. Amen and amen. And if you're out there and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ yet as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Please repeat these words of prayer after me right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price for my salvation for giving your life for me. Today, I repent of my sin and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth. Therefore, by faith, 
right now. I am born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, whoo, hallelujah. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to the commonwealth of the new covenant saints. Amen and amen. We want to help you to grow from being a child of God to becoming a mature son of God. So please direct message us on any of our social media platforms. Send us an email or follow the pathway that's on, that's on our website and we will do everything to help you to grow in the Lord. It's important that you are planted in the house of the Lord and this is a great house in which to be planted. We're looking forward to seeing you soon and hearing from you real soon. Brethren, let's walk by faith. Right now, it's time for us to give our offerings and our tithes. And so the various ways in which you can give are now being shown on the screen. Please choose the pathway that is most preferred by you. Our giving towards the work of the Lord is partnering with the Lord. The scripture says that we are co-laborers with the Lord. It's also an act of faith to take of our resources and give it. Because every time we do that, we're telling God, I believe you, that my real source of sustenance is you and not the earthly things I see around me. I want to encourage you to give generously to the work of the Lord and believe God. He's going to show up for you real good. He's going to show up for you real big. He's going to show up for, up for you mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare blessings upon every gift and upon every giver in the name of Jesus. May testimonies of breakthrough, may testimonies of supply, may tes testimonies of lifting against all odds be theirs in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Don't miss next week Wednesday. It's going to be off the hook as we deal with the fight of faith. Faith is a fight. How do we make sure that we win that fight every single time? You don't want to miss that. It's going to be a real, real blessing to everybody that tunes in next week Wednesday. Don't miss Sunday also. It's going to be great as we celebrate the Father, Father's Day and also continue our journey of great faith. God bless you. God bless you. Real good. Let's close out this service with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and God's mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you.